So next, let's talk about replication. There are a number of built-in tools to ZFS that allow you to replicate the data once you have snapshots. So once you have a snapshot, you may want to take that data and send it someplace. Um, they use the word send and receive because that's really what you want to do. You want to take it and um, copy it to another location. Um, and what happens when you do this, it actually opens up a stream to send to another location. So you can send it to another host or you can send it to another pool or data set. Makes a very clean stream. So the syntax of this command is we're going to send a snapshot and we're going to pick up and open that stream up and, and send it to ZFS receive to, and in this, the first example I have, I'm going to, it's going to be received into archive and then new. So it will actually create a new data set called new in archive pool. That is a full replication of big pool data's snapshot. Now the other thing that you can do is do it with uh, another host. So we can ZFS send a snapshot to another host. We have one more option. Let me show you this first and then I'll show you incremental. So let me show you around a little bit of what I'm doing here. I actually spun up another VM running FreeNAS. Um, it's a it's a kind of GUI tool that's built on top of FreeBSD. I kind of I wanted to show how easy this is to go cross platform. Um, so I've I've got that. I still have my Omni here. So this window here is SSH'd into. Um, the Omni and this one is SSH'd into the FreeNAS. Um, I'm going to do this just as root just because it's the easiest. Um, I allowed root access on, on the FreeNAS box. I did though do real quickly here a ZFS list to show that there is a data set here. Hopefully you can see this. I'll move it up. Um, archive hosts and um, this um, I named it like that because you may want to take your hosts and archive them off onto another system so this has a lot of space available three terabytes or a decent amount of space available I'm only going to send over 29k so that's not going to be a lot but let me show you what how this works instead of you having to look at me type this all out Let's make sure I have this right. So I'm going to send this snapshot. So big pool data at today, and I'm going to send it over SSH to this IP address. Um, if you wanted to do it non root, you can um, pass your keys or um, make sure you want to make sure that um, the, the host that you're sending it to will receive the data and that the user has permission on the data set. So I'm going to send this over to archive slash host and I'll just call it Omni1 is the data set that it will populate. So we'll create a whole new data set called Omni1 on the other system. So let's go. It's going to ask me for the password over there. I will enter it and oh, that was quick. So let's see if it got over there. I'm going to go over here on the FreeNAS box. They mount everything up onto MNT. Archive hosts. So if I'm there and do an LS, there it is, Omni1. It's, uh, I should have showed you that before I did the replication, but um, believe me that this directory is completely empty. I just set up the, the system. Now when I do the ZFS list, you'll see that it's created it as a data set now on the remote system and it should be populated. And if we go in there into Omni 1, we'll see uh, yeah. uh, LS, we should see there's our file. There's our other data sets below that that uh, are just directories when they come off here. Um, and uh, 
yeah, the data's over there. Now, if we wanted to um, do another snapshot, we would, our syntax would be, so ZFS send and then a minus I that says send me incrementally between this snapshot, the one I took yesterday, and the one I took today, and then send it over SSH to the remote host. So another way to do applic uh, replication, um, I don't know that you'd call it replication, maybe. I could split off some mirrors or something to create a pool. Um, but really to move, do a, a, a very large move of data. Um, I've seen people do this, especially if they're moving a big set of data from one data center to another. Um, they don't wanna do that first big send. Um, so they, um, you know, they create a pool, they um, do the replication locally. So they do a ZFS send from one pool to the other pool and then export the pool and then physically move the data. I've, you know, people move uh, large JBODs and, and uh, whatnot to other, the other data center. And then they get to the remote host and they Z pool import. Um, I've done this across a number of different, um, not different architectures. Well, I've done it across Sparkgate and x86, but across a number of different distros. And that's a thing that's very cool is that um, I was I was just reading something today where this person was worried about moving their data from one enterprise storage to another, and you know all they they can't repurpose the disk, right? They don't get to redo the disk; they have to copy it or move it somehow. But the originating disk, um, you know, is is in a proprietary frame with a proprietary file system with proprietary everything. Um, so here it's not, right? It's all open source. So we export the pool on one host, we import it on another host. Um, and this is nice too, if you have a system and uh, I do a, a hardware architecture and design class, but in most cases I recommend having the disks separate from the CPU or the, the boot drive or um, you know use some sort of um, SAS or SATA channel between the the head node and the actual disk and it makes it very easy to export import um, between frames like between test and dev and um, production too right being able to move move that data physically move that data just by reconnecting different um, channels instead of having to um, I remember, listen, you know, I have, a, I have a lot of customers who still do FTP, you know, just to move the data from one location to another. So, um, so if we do this, let me show you this. So let's start, we'll just go Z pool list real quick. We have our root pool and our big pool. I'm going to do a Z pool export of big pool. At this point, it may still be physically connected or you can move to another host or um, as you move to another host, if you do a Z pool import with nothing, I could say big pool because I know it's big pool, but I can do a Z pool import without big pool and it'll actually show me big pool. Um, I actually had to reconfigure big pool with actual real devices. This didn't work right um, with just the files. But um, yeah, and you see that big pools made out of these two disks and the pool can be imported using its name or numeric identifier, which is this thing here. Um, every pool on the planet should have a unique ID. So let's go import Z pool import big pool and Z pool list. And there you go, it's back online again. Oh, I forgot to show you that it wasn't there. Let's go export the pool list. Gone. The pool import big pool. The pool list. There it is.